Kathleen, I'm 15 years old and I'm in ninth grade. My name is Carly, I'm 12 years old and I'm in seventh grade. Let's learn English. We'll be sharing our screen so you can see a PowerPoint we made. This is our 13th lesson. What we are reading will first be reading at a normal speed, then at a slower speed. Afterwards, you can pause the video to answer the questions and unpause to see our answer. Practice one. Listen to part of a conversation between a student and a librarian. Normal speed. Hi, um, I really hope you can help me. That's why I'm here. What can I do for you? I'm supposed to do a literature review for my psychology course, but I'm having a hard time finding articles. I don't even know where to start looking. You said this is for your psychology course, right? So your focus is on... Dream interpretation. Well, you have a focus, so that's already a good start. Hmm, well, there are a few things. Oh, wait. Have you checked to see if your professor put any materials for you to look at on reserve? That's one thing I didn't know to do. I just copied an article, but I still need three more on my topic from three different journals. Let's get you going on looking for those, then. We have printed versions of 20 or so psychology journals in the reference section. These are ones published within the last year. Now that I think about it, there's a journal named Sleep and Dreams. Yeah, the article I just copied is from that journal, so I've got to look at other sources. Okay. Actually, most of our material is available electronically now. You can access psychology databases or electronic journal and articles through the library's computers. And if you wanted to search by title with the word dream, for example, just type it in and all the articles with dream in the title will come up on the screen. Cool, that's great. Too bad I can't do this from home. But you can. All of the library's databases and electronic sources can be accessed through any computer connected to the university network. Really? I can't believe I didn't know that. It still sounds like it's going to take a while, though, you know, going through all of the information, all of the sources. Maybe, but you already narrowed your search down to articles on dream interpretation, so it shouldn't be too bad. And you probably noticed that there's an abstract or summary at the top of the first page of the article you copied. When you do go into the databases and electronic sources, you have the option to display the abstracts on the computer screen. Skimming those to decide whether or not you want to read the whole article should cut down some time. Right, abstracts. They will definitely make the project more doable. I guess I should try out the electronic search while I'm still here then, you know, just in case. Sure. Uh, that computer is free over there, and I'll be here until 5 this afternoon. Thanks. I feel a lot better about this assignment now. We'll now be reading it at a slower speed. Hi, um, I really hope you can help me. That's why I'm here. What can I do for you? I'm supposed to do a literature review for my psychology course, but I'm having a hard time finding articles. I don't even know where to start looking. You said this is for your psychology course, right? So your focus is on... Dream interpretation. Well, you have a focus, so that's already a good start. Hmm, well, there are a few things. Oh, wait. Have you checked to see if your professor put any materials for you to look at on reserve? That's one thing I didn't know to do. I just copied an article, but I still need three more on my topic from three different journals. Let's get you going on looking for those, then. We have printed versions of 20 or so psychology journals in the reference section. These are ones published within the last year. Now that I think about it, there's a journal named, named Sleep and Dreams. Yeah, the article I just copied is from that journal, so I've got to look in other sources. Okay. Actually, most of our materials available electronically now. You can access psychology databases or electronic journal and articles through the library's computers. And if you wanted to search by title with the word dream, for example, just type it in and all the articles with dream in the title will come up on the screen. Cool, that's great. Too bad I can't do this from home. But you can. All of the library's databases and electronic sources can be accessed 
through any computer connected to the university network. Really? I can't believe I didn't know that. It still sounds like it's going to take a while, though. You know, going through all of that information, all of those sources. Maybe, but you already narrowed your search down to articles on dream interpretation, so it shouldn't be too bad. And you probably noticed that there's an abstract or summary at the top of the first page of the article you copied. When you do go into the databases and electronic sources, you have the option to display the abstracts on the computer screen, skimming those to decide whether or not you want to read the whole article to cut down some time. Right, abstracts. They will definitely make the project more doable. I guess I should try out the electronic search while I'm still here then, you know, just in case. Sure. Um, that computer's free over there. And I'll be here till five this afternoon. Thanks. I feel a lot better about this assignment now. So for question five, the question is, why does the woman say this? All of the library's databases and electronic sources can be accessed through any computer connected to the university network. Really? I can't believe I didn't know that. So where it says number one, it's talking about how the student is asking the librarian for help finding articles because the student is having a hard time finding the articles and doesn't know where to start looking. And then right here, it talks about how the psychology journals in the reference section and they were published from last year were within last year. And then at two, it talks about how most of their materials are now available electronically, so it's available online. And then right here, it's talking about how you can access the library's database and sources through any computer connected to the university network. So you can connect it from like home as long as you're connected to the university network and the student is surprised because the student didn't know that she could do it at home. And then number three, it's talking about how at the top of each page, there is a summary. So you can know what the article is about. And then when you go to four, it talks about how the student is going to try out the electronic search at the library just in case like she, uh, she needs help or something or she like can't do it. So question one is why does the student go to see the librarian? The correct answer is D to ask about how to look for resources for a class paper. This is correct because the student says that the, the, she has to do a literature review, but she's having a hard time finding the articles. Question two is, what does the librarian say about the availability of journals and articles in the library? The correct answer is B, most of them are accessible in an electronic format. And this is correct because the librarian talks to the student about how most of the library's uh, material is available online now. And then D is incorrect because it says how the printed versions in the reference section are within the last year and not the past three years. For question three is, what does the librarian suggest the student should do to save time? The correct answer is C, read the summaries of the articles first. Uh, the librarian tells the student that at the top there's the abstract or there's the summary. And so it's easier to go through and see what articles the student wants, which will make it faster and saving time. 
Question four is, what can be inferred about why the woman decides to use the computer in the library? The correct answer is A, she thinks she might need additional help from the man. This is correct because the student says that she's going to try out the electronic search while she's still at the library just in case, which means that she might need additional help from the man. And for question five, it's why does the woman say this? So it's talking about how the librarian is telling the student that the library's database and sources uh, can be accessed from any computer that is connected to the university network. So you can do it from home and you don't have to be in the library to do it. And the student is surprised that she didn't know that she could do it from like home or somewhere else. So the correct answer is B, she is surprised she was not aware of the information. Like the information is basically like she, uh, she can access the library's databases from home or another computer, not necessarily in the library. Practice two. Listen to part of the lecture on the topic you just read about. Summarize the professor's opinions. Normal speed. Everything you just read about portrait of an elderly woman in a white bonnet is true. And yet after a thorough re-examination of the painting, a panel of experts has recently concluded that it's indeed a work by Rembrandt. Here's why. First, the fur collar. X-rays and analysis of the pigment in the paint have shown that the fur collar wasn't part of the original painting. The fur collar was painted over the top of the original painting about 100 years after the painting was made. Why? Someone probably wanted to increase the value of the painting by making it look like a formal portrait of an aristocratic lady. Second, the supposed error with light and shadow. Once the paint of the added fur color was removed, the original could be seen. In the original painting, the woman is wearing a simple collar of light-colored cloth. The light-colored cloth of this collar reflects light that illuminates part of the woman's face. That's why the face is not in partial shadow. So in the original painting, light and shadow are very realistic and just what we would expect from Rembrandt. Finally, the wood panel. It turns out that when the fur color was added, the wood panel was also enlarged with extra wood pieces glued to the sides and the top to make the painting more grand and more valuable. So the original painting is actually painted on a single piece of wood, as would be expected from a Rembrandt painting. And in fact, researchers have found that the piece of wood in the original form of portrait of an elderly woman in a white bonnet is from the very same tree as the wood panel used for another painting by Rembrandt, his self-portrait with a hat. We'll now be reading it at a slower speed. Everything you just read about portrait of an elderly woman in a white bonnet is true. And yet after a thorough re-examination of the painting, a panel of experts has recently concluded that it's indeed a work by Rembrandt. Here is why. First, the fur collar. X-rays and analysis of the pigment in the paint have shown that the fur collar wasn't part of the original painting. The fur collar was painted over the top of the original painting about a hundred years after the painting was made. Why? Someone probably wanted to increase the value of the painting by making it look like a formal portrait of an aristocratic lady. Second, the supposed error with light and shadow. Once the paint of the added fur color was removed, the original could be seen. In the original painting, the woman is wearing a simple collar of light colored cloth. The light colored cloth of this collar reflects light that illuminates part of the woman's face. That's why the face is not in partial shadow. So in the original painting, light and shadow are very realistic and just what we would expect from Rembrandt. Finally, the wood panel. It turns out that when the fur collar was added, the wood panel was also enlarged with extra wood pieces glued to the sides and the top to make the painting more grand and more valuable. So the original painting is actually painted on a single piece of wood, as would be expected from a Rembrandt painting. And in fact, researchers have found that the piece of wood in the original form, a portrait of an elderly woman in a white bonnet, 
is from the very same tree as the wood panel used for another painting by Rembrandt, his self-portrait with a hat. So here where it says one, it's a summary of the professor's opinion, and this lecture is going to be about her opinion. So the professor's opinion is that everything in the article is true, but um, experts concluded that it the painting is still a work by Rembrandt. So here where it says two, it is her first reason. And it's that the fur collar wasn't part of the original painting. And they know this because of x-rays and analysis. Here where it says three, this is her second reason. And it's that in the original painting, the woman was wearing a simple collar, a collar that was light colored. So the color reflected the light instead of absorbing it. So the face is not in partial shadow. And here where it says four, this is her final reason. And it's that the original painting was on one single piece of wood, but some people added extra wood pieces to the sides to make it more valuable. Practice three, listen to the message and list a few facts about that roof. Normal speed. Welcome to the Four Winds Historical Farm, where traditions of the past are preserved for visitors like you. Today, our master thatchers will begin giving this farm behind me a sturdy thatch roof, able to withstand heavy winds and last up to 100 years. How do they do it? Well, in a nutshell, thatching involves covering the beams or rafters, the wooden skeleton of a roof with reeds or straw. Our thatchers here have harvested their own natural materials for the job, the bundles of water reeds you see lying over there beside the barn. Thatching is certainly uncommon in the United States today. I guess that's why so many of you have come to see this demonstration. But it wasn't always that way. In the 17th century, the colonists here thatched their roofs with reeds and straw, just as they had done in England. After a while, though, they began to replace the thatch with wooden shingles because wood was so plentiful. And eventually, other roofing materials like stone, slate, and clay tiles came into use. It's a real shame that most people do today don't realize how strong and long-lasting a thatch roof is. In Ireland, where thatching is still practiced, the roofs can survive winds of up to 110 miles per hour. That's because straw and reeds are so flexible. They bend but don't break in the wind like other materials can. Another advantage is that the roofs keep the house cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And then, of course, there's the roof's longevity. The average is 60 years, but they can last up to 100. With all these reasons to start thatching roofs again, wouldn't it be wonderful to see this disappearing craft return to popularity? Now we'll be reading it again slower. Welcome to the Four Winds Historical Farm where traditions of the past are preserved for visitors like you. Today, our master thatchers will begin giving this barn behind me a sturdy thatched roof, able to withstand heavy winds and last up to a hundred years. How do they do it? Well, in a nutshell, thatching involves covering the beams or rafters, the wooden skeleton of a roof with reeds or straw. Our thatchers here have harvested their own natural materials for the job. The bundles of water reeds you see lying over there beside the barn. Thatching is certainly uncommon in the United States today. I guess that's why so many of you have come to see this demonstration. But it wasn't always that way. In the 17th century, the colonists here thatched their roofs with reeds and straw, just as they had done in England. After a while, though, they began to replace the thatch with wooden shingles because wood was so plentiful. And eventually, other roofing materials like sloan, slates, and clay tiles came into use. It's a real shame that most people today don't realize how strong 
and long-lasting a thatched roof is. In Ireland, where thatching is still practiced, the roofs can survive winds of up to 110 miles per hour. That's because straw and reeds are so flexible. They bend but don't break in the wind like other materials can. Another advantage is that the roofs keep the house cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And then, of course, there's the roof's longevity. The average is 60 years, but they can last up to 100. With all these reasons to start thatching roofs again, wouldn't it be wonderful to see this disappearing craft return to popularity? So where it says one is talking about how thatching is uh, very uncommon in the United States today, but it wasn't always uncommon. And in the 17th century, the colonists who lived there thatched their roofs. And then at two, it talks about how later the colonists replaced the uh, that, thatch roofs with other materials, but and now people today, they don't realize how strong a thatch roof is and how long it can last. And number three is it's talking about a thatch roof lasts so long because it's made of straw and reed and straw and reed are flexible. So like in the wind, they bend, but then they don't break. And number four is another advantage that the roof has is that it can keep the house cold in this cool in the summer and then warm in the winter. So how you could answer this is you could just give a few facts about thatch roofs. So you could say thatching is uncommon in the United States, but the colonists in the 17th century, they had thatched their roofs, but it was later replaced. So people today don't realize how strong and how long a thatch roof can last. And here are the important words from this lesson, and you should memorize these. That's the end of today's lesson. I hope you like it, and we'll have more lessons. Bye!